Today, we're jumping into the thrilling and mysterious world of NASA, UFOs, and all that secret tech that could be out there. Now, this isn't just stuff you find in sci-fi books. We're diving into the heart of some mind-blowing conspiracy theories. Let's break them down and chat about the people who've brought these wild ideas into the spotlight, such as the different alien types and what technology NASA may have. So, have you ever wondered if NASA's hiding some really cool alien tech? There's a bunch of theories out there that suggest they might have gadgets that are way more advanced than anything we've seen. Some people think NASA, maybe with a little help from other secret groups, got their hands on this stuff from UFO crash sites or through some sneaky deals with aliens. Just think about what that could mean for us. And then there's talk about NASA making some groundbreaking discoveries, like crazy good propulsion systems or entirely new energy sources. But here's the catch, these breakthroughs might be top secret. Why, you ask? Maybe they want to keep things just the way they are, or they're worried about this tech getting into the wrong hands. There's also this idea that what NASA shows us is just a small part of what they're really up to. Some folks speculate about hidden missions, secret bases on the Moon or Mars, and even close encounters with extraterrestrials in space. It's like something straight out of a sci-fi blockbuster. Let's chat about some interesting characters in the UFO world. Bob Lazar. This guy is pretty famous in UFO circles. He claimed he was working on reverse engineering alien spaceships near the mysterious Area 51. He talked about the government having a few of these spacecraft and even mentioned using an element called Moscovium for propulsion, long before it was officially recognized. Pretty wild, right? Gary McKinnon. He's the British hacker who made the news for breaking into US military and NASA computers. Gary claimed he stumbled upon evidence of a secret space program, including lists of non-terrestrial officers and details about transferring materials between space fleets. It sounds like something out of a Hollywood movie. Paul Hellyer, the former Canadian Minister of Defense turned UFO enthusiast. He's been pretty vocal about governments keeping the reality of UFOs and alien visitors under wraps. Paul believes that aliens have been visiting Earth for a long time and that this is a big secret shared among world governments. Edgar Mitchell, an Apollo 14 astronaut who wasn't shy about his belief in extraterrestrial life and UFOs. He suggested that the government has been hiding info about UFOs for ages, though he didn't have concrete proof to support his claims. Okay, let's start with the grey aliens, just picture them. They're not very tall, kind of slender with this really smooth grey skin. But the most striking thing about them, their heads are huge, especially compared to their bodies, and they've got these big, almond-shaped black eyes. It's like they're staring right into your soul. And they don't have regular ears or noses, just small openings, and their mouths are super tiny. Ever since the Roswell UFO incident back in 47, these greys have been the talk of the town. They've become a huge part of science fiction, popping up in books, movies, TV shows, you name it. They're basically the face of the whole alien concept. But get this. In a lot of stories and supposed encounters, these greys are super smart and have technology that's way ahead of ours. We're talking about high-tech spacecraft, maybe even telepathic powers, and all sorts of gadgets, often used for mysterious medical procedures. And yeah, there's a lot of talk about abductions, which just adds to the intrigue and, let's be honest, the spookiness. Next up, green aliens. These guys are a bit more like us. Humanoid, you know? They've got green skin and more familiar features like ears, noses, and mouths. Some of them even have antennae or other unique features. Green aliens have been a big part of early science fiction. You've probably seen them in old movies and cartoons, sometimes friendly, sometimes not so much. They might not be as popular as the greys these days, but they're still iconic in their own right. What's cool about them is how versatile they are in stories. Some are just curious about us humans, while others seem to have more let's say, ambitious plans. It's what makes them such great characters in sci-fi. And now the robot-alien hybrids talk about a mind-blowing concept. Imagine a creature that's part machine, part alien. Some parts of their body are totally mechanical, like something out of a high-tech lab while others are organic. This idea is huge in science fiction. It's where we play around with the idea of blending biology with technology. And of course, there are all sorts of theories about them, like maybe they're watching us or have some secret mission on Earth. These hybrids are often shown as super intelligent and strong, way beyond what any human or regular machine can do. But emotionally, they're a bit of a mystery. They might not feel things the way we do, which really gets you thinking about what it means to be alive. 
So what's the deal with NASA and aliens? Well, NASA's pretty straightforward about it. They're like, nope, we haven't found any extraterrestrial life or tech. Their gig is exploring space, looking for any signs of life, but as of now, they haven't stumbled upon any alien spaceships. But of course, that doesn't stop all the talk and theories in the UFO world. All right, despite NASA saying they haven't found anything alien, the conspiracy theories are buzzing. Some folks are convinced NASA's playing a bigger game, keeping secrets alongside other government bodies. They think NASA's hiding proof of alien visits or even stashing away some high-tech alien gadgets. And when you see weird stuff in NASA's footage, like unexplained objects, people are quick to shout UFO. But a lot of these can be explained as just space junk or tricks of the light. Now let's chat about Bob Lazar, a name that's pretty controversial in UFO circles. In 89, this guy claimed he was reverse engineering alien tech at a secret spot near Area 51. He even mentioned working with this mysterious element 115 to power these crafts. He described seeing saucer-like spaceships zooming around like nothing we've got on Earth. But here's where it gets dicey. People have poked holes in Lazar's story, questioning his background and the truth behind his wild claims. Don't forget, the US government's been peeking into UFOs for a while now. Remember Project Blue Book? From the 50s to the 60s, they were all about documenting and analyzing UFO sightings. But in the end, they were like, nothing to see here, folks. Most of the stuff they saw, they could explain, and they didn't find any evidence of little green men in flying saucers. In recent years, UFOs have made a comeback, especially with the Pentagon showing off videos of Navy pilots running into some unidentified aerial weirdness. These clips have got people talking again about aliens and their rides. But the big guys in the government, they're still not signing off on any of these being extraterrestrial. Let's dive into these NASA theories. Some folks reckon NASA astronauts have bumped into UFOs or other bizarre things out there in the vastness of space, but are keeping mum about it. People point to videos that look a bit fishy, strange stuff in space mission photos, or even mysterious comments from astronauts as proof that there's more than meets the eye. Now, onto the really juicy stuff, alien structures on the Moon and Mars. There's talk that NASA's stumbled upon alien buildings or artifacts on these far-off places, but is keeping the pictures under wraps. Imagine that, secret bases on the dark side of the moon or oddities in photos from the Mars rovers. It's like something straight out of a science fiction novel. And then there's the idea that NASA's got its hands on some super advanced alien tech that's just way out of our league. Think propulsion systems that could totally revamp space travel or other crazy technologies that could flip our world on its head. One event that gets a lot of attention is the so-called tether incident from 1996. A satellite tether snaps and the video shows some weird objects floating around. Some say they're UFOs. NASA says they're just ice particles. It's a real head scratcher. Let's talk about some big names in the UFO scene. Edgar Mitchell, an Apollo astronaut, didn't shy away from talking about his belief in UFOs and aliens. He even went as far as to say that the Roswell incident was legit and that aliens have made contact with Earth. Then there's Gordon Cooper, another astronaut, who claimed he saw a UFO while piloting a jet and another sighting at Edwards Air Force Base. And let's not forget Gary McKinnon, the British hacker who broke into NASA and military computers and claimed to have found evidence of a secret space program and UFO tech. But, as intriguing as these theories are, we've got to keep our feet on the ground. A lot of these ideas are based on misunderstandings, a lack of solid evidence, or just plain old misinformation. NASA and other scientific groups have given pretty logical explanations for these supposed oddities, pointing to things like optical illusions or just regular space stuff. And really, with so much information now available to us all and NASA's active search for extraterrestrial life through programs like SETI and Mars missions, it's tough to believe they'd be able to keep a secret this huge. Have you ever looked up at the moon and wondered what lies on its unseen side? The moon's far side, often mistakenly called the dark side, despite receiving just as much sunlight as the side facing Earth, has been a subject of fascination and mystery for centuries. It wasn't until 1959 when the Soviet Luna 3 spacecraft sent back the first images of this hidden hemisphere that we got our first glimpse of what was there. This side of the moon is markedly different from the one we see. It's rugged, densely cratered and lacks the large, dark basaltic plains, or Maria that are so prominent on the near side. 
The moon's far side, largely hidden from the Earth, has been a fertile ground for conspiracy theories and wild speculations, largely because of its relative mystery and inaccessibility. One of the most persistent theories is that the far side of the moon harbors evidence of extraterrestrial life or even alien bases. This theory gained traction in part due to the lack of detailed imagery of this lunar region until the latter part of the 20th century, allowing imagination to fill in the gaps in knowledge. Some conspiracy theorists argue that structures visible in photographs from lunar missions are artificial, perhaps remnants of an ancient alien civilization. They often point to certain features that appear unnatural or too geometrically regular to be the result of natural processes. These claims, however, are typically based on misinterpretations of low-resolution images, where pareidolia, the human tendency to see recognizable shapes in random patterns, often comes into play. Another popular theory posits that the Moon, particularly its far side, is a strategic observational post for extraterrestrial spacecraft monitoring Earth. Proponents of this theory often cite unexplained anomalies in radio communications experienced by Apollo astronauts when they orbited the Moon's far side, suggesting these were attempts at alien contact or interference. However, experts explain that these anomalies were more likely due to technical issues with radio equipment or natural interference from the lunar environment. The idea of an alien base on the far side of the Moon was further fueled by the mysterious termination of the Apollo program. Some theorists believe that astronauts encountered signs of alien life during their missions, leading to a hasty and secretive end to lunar exploration. They suggest that subsequent missions and satellite imagery of the Moon have been doctored or withheld from the public to hide these facts. However, historical records and testimonies from those involved in the Apollo program paint a different picture, attributing the program's end to budgetary constraints and shifting governmental priorities. There are also claims that certain craters and other geological formations on the far side are perfectly shaped or positioned in ways that defy natural explanation, suggesting they are either alien-made or hold some form of hidden message or technology. These claims, however, lack substantial evidence and are generally dismissed by the scientific community. Despite these conspiracy theories, scientific missions and studies have consistently supported natural explanations for the features observed on the Moon's far side. High-resolution images and data from various lunar missions, including recent ones like the Chinese Chang-4 mission, have provided detailed insights into the Moon's geology, all pointing to natural formations and processes. The far side of the Moon, often shrouded in mystery and intrigue, presents a landscape strikingly different from the familiar face that greets us each night. This hidden hemisphere of the Moon, first revealed in detail by the Soviet Luna 3 spacecraft in 1959, is a tapestry of craters, mountains and highlands, a stark contrast to the Maria-dominated near side. One of the most striking features of the Moon's far side is its rugged terrain. This side of the moon is heavily cratered and has fewer of the smooth, dark basaltic plains or maria that are so prominent on the near side. The absence of extensive maria on the far side has led scientists to surmise that the crust there is thicker, making it less susceptible to volcanic activity that formed the maria. This difference in crustal thickness is thought to be a relic of the moon's formation and early history. When the moon was forming and still molten, heavier elements sank to its center creating a denser mantle and crust on the side facing Earth. The most prominent feature on the far side of the Moon is the South Pole Aitken Basin, one of the largest and oldest impact craters in the solar system. Measuring about 2,500 kilometers in diameter and about 13 kilometers deep, this colossal crater provides valuable insights into the Moon's geological history. Studies of the basin have revealed unusual mineral compositions, suggesting that the impact might have been so powerful that it penetrated through the crust and into the mantle. This has significant implications, as it offers a rare opportunity to study the Moon's interior composition. The lunar far side also hosts several other notable features, such as the Tsiolkovsky crater, named after the Russian space pioneer. This crater, with its complex structure and distinctive dark halo, is a subject of intense scientific interest. The halo is believed to be a result of volcanic activity, indicating that the far side of the moon was not always geologically inactive. Another intriguing aspect of the far side is the lunar highlands, an extensive area covered with peaks and valleys. 
The highlands are composed predominantly of anorthosite, a type of rock formed from magma. These rocks are lighter in color and older than the basaltic rocks that filled the Maria, providing a window into the moon's past. The highlands are pockmarked with craters, each telling a story of the moon's long history of cosmic bombardment. The far side of the moon also has fewer mascons, or mass concentrations, which are large areas of dense material sitting beneath the surface. Mascons are responsible for the gravitational anomalies that affect the orbits of spacecraft around the moon. Their scarcity on the far side further underscores the dichotomy between the two hemispheres of our lunar neighbor. The scientific exploration of the moon's far side, a region untouched by direct sunlight for centuries, has been a subject of immense interest and curiosity within the scientific community. This interest intensified following the historic moment in 1959, when the Soviet Luna 3 spacecraft first captured images of this mysterious lunar hemisphere. These images revealed a terrain vastly different from the familiar near side, with a lack of large maria and an abundance of craters, igniting a desire to learn more about this uncharted territory. One of the most significant breakthroughs in the exploration of the Moon's far side came with NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, LRO, launched in 2009. The LRO's mission, among other objectives, included mapping the Moon's surface in unprecedented detail, providing scientists with critical data about its topography, temperature and mineral composition. This data has been instrumental in enhancing our understanding of the Moon's geological history and has helped identify potential landing sites for future missions. The Chinese Chang'e 4 mission, which landed on the Moon's far side in January 2019, marked a new chapter in lunar exploration. This mission, which included the U-22 rover, was the first to perform a soft landing on this part of the Moon, achieving what had been a long-standing objective for space explorers. One of the key scientific goals of Chang'e 4 is to analyze the chemical composition of the lunar surface, particularly in the South Pole Aitken Basin a vast impact crater that could offer clues about the Moon's early history and its crust's composition. Chang'e 4 also carries instruments to conduct low-frequency radio astronomical observations. The far side of the Moon is an ideal location for these observations due to its shielding from the Earth's electromagnetic noise. This makes it a perfect spot to study the space environment and solar bursts, and potentially to observe the early stages of the universe, free from the interference experienced on Earth. In addition to these missions, there are also proposals for building robotic and human bases on the far side of the Moon. These bases could serve as crucial steps in deep space exploration, including manned missions to Mars and beyond. The far side's unique geology offers opportunities for extensive scientific research, including the study of the Moon's tectonic activity and the testing of new space technologies in a challenging environment. Furthermore, the exploration of the Moon's far side could play a vital role in understanding the dynamics of Earth-Moon interactions. Studies of the Moon's crust and mantle on this side can provide insights into the thermal evolution of the Moon and its orbital dynamics, which in turn can shed light on Earth's geological history and the conditions that led to life on our planet. The far side of the Moon, often overlooked in favor of its more familiar counterpart, holds immense strategic significance for both scientific and exploratory missions in space. One of the key factors contributing to its importance is the unique radio silence it offers. Shielded from the Earth's electromagnetic interference, the Moon's far side presents an ideal location for deep space radio observatories. The absence of Earth-originated radio noise provides a pristine environment to study the universe in the radio spectrum, allowing astronomers to detect faint signals from the distant cosmos that would be lost in the cacophony of Earth's radio emissions. This radio silence opens up possibilities for studying phenomena, such as the cosmic microwave background radiation and searching for signals from the early universe. It could also enhance the search for extraterrestrial intelligence by providing a clearer view of the cosmos, free from the clutter of human-made signals. Establishing radio observatories here could lead to groundbreaking discoveries in astrophysics, giving us insights into the formation of the first stars and galaxies, the nature of dark energy, and the evolution of the universe. Another aspect of the far side's strategic importance is its geology. The South Pole Aitken Basin, 
one of the largest known impact structures in the solar system, is located here. This basin is believed to have exposed the lunar mantle and could contain rocks with a different composition than those found on the near side. Exploring this basin could yield valuable information about the Moon's formation and its geological history, which in turn could shed light on Earth's early history and the conditions that led to life on our planet. Furthermore, the far side of the Moon is of interest for future manned lunar missions and potential permanent bases. The challenges posed by its rugged terrain and the lack of direct communication with Earth make it an ideal testbed for technologies that could be used for long-duration space missions, including those to Mars. The isolation provides an opportunity to develop and test life support systems, habitats and other technologies in an environment that closely mimics deep space conditions. In addition, the Moon's far side holds potential for resource exploitation. The discovery of water ice in permanently shadowed craters, particularly near the lunar south pole, is of great interest. Water is not only vital for supporting life, but can also be broken down into hydrogen and oxygen, providing fuel and breathable air for astronauts. The ability to utilize these resources on site could be crucial for the sustainability of long-term lunar bases and for future deep space exploration missions. The strategic importance of the Moon's far side extends to its potential as a stepping stone in human space exploration. Establishing a presence here could serve as a springboard for missions further into the solar system. The experience gained in operating in this remote and challenging environment would provide invaluable knowledge and skills for future exploration endeavors.